Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to the Fearless Online Entrepreneurs Mastermind group. And we are excited about today and what we're going to be discussing. New marketing strategy. You are not um, you need to be heard about and you, your visibility. So we're looking forward to going ahead and digging into this information. A little bit about me. Um, I've been online for about six years now. Um, have seen struggles, have seen individuals go from, you know, not making the money to making money and actually went through the same experience myself. So the goal of the Fearless Online Entrepreneurs is to empower, encourage, educate you to take action to be the entrepreneur that you desire to be. I also have my awesome, awesome panel here. Um, Jody Malley, Lorraine of Scott Obey, Scarlett Rogers. We are excited about our mastermind session that's going to take place today and looking forward to digging in and sharing with you nuggets and ideas that's going to help you propel forward in your business and in your life. Without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started into our information and begin to dig in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and what we're using is a book called Millionaire Mindset. If you do not have this book, we want to encourage you to go over to um, Fearless Online Entrepreneurs on Facebook, request to get in our group, and that book will be in the file section for you. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started in our discussion um, and our reading our discussion. So today we're going to be over here on page number, oh boy, I can't see the page. Does anybody see the page? I know it's on new marketing reality number seven, but okay, page um, 257. 257. We'll start at 257. And um, who wants to start out reading? I'll start. Thank you. I don't know who that is. Who's that that I start? This is Miss Scarlett. Oh, hi. Thank you, Scarlett. Hi, guys. This is Scarlett Roger from Tampa, Florida, your Joy Restoration Coach. And we're going to start with New Marketing Reality 7. You, you are not heard without the power of visibility. Let me move this to my screen and make it bigger for me because I am blind. All right. Given the current market conditions, you need to be seen regularly by your prospect base. They will not only need to see you and your message frequently, you need to be seen in a certain way. The more frequently they see your full message, the better chance you have that they will respond to it. There exists a real need today to utilize innovative methods for getting a front in front of clients. You need to consider strategies that are perhaps different than what is currently the standard for your industry. Dr. Lou Spinozzi, an optomet optometrist from Denver, Colorado, let me make this just a bit bigger, regularly attends dental conventions for ideas. He's got the idea. He now uses unique tactics such as press release, postcards, articles, and interviews he sets up as marketing. Of course, he's written a book specifically to help him visibly to get vis the vis visibility he needs to stand out in the marketplace. Another example of Dr. Cynthia Barnett. She's an executive coach in Norwalk, Connecticut. Understanding the need to gain visibility to professionals seeking to improve themselves, she authored a simple 110-page book for the express purpose of becoming more visible. What she found was staggering. She received lots of free publicity even before her book was written. As the author, she was interviewed and used the exposure to gain more interviews. Time Magazine even featured her in an article about women in transition. Talk about visibility. A book guarantees you instant and never-ending visibility. New Marketing Reality 8. Slick is out. Credibility is in. First came Dress for Success, teaching you the importance of looking sharp if you're looking to succeed in sales. Then came seminars about everything from power closing sales to professional selling scales by leading management consulting companies. Of course, teaching you how to manipulate people based on their eye movement, the end result was to make you a slick salespeople person. Listen carefully. The quality of the pen you use isn't nearly as important as the depth of your credibility. Is this 
the way you look important? Of course it is. Should you not drive a nice car if you're taking prospects to look at houses? Sure. It should be a great car, but when it comes to comparing externals like dress, pens, and cars to internals like integrity, knowledge, character, and trust, they aren't even comparable. The reality of our day is that unless you are seen as a trusted, credible advisor who solves problems for people and that you will put them in their needs ahead of what you are pushing or willing to make from them, you're dead in the water. There is another example of why you need to consider yourself as opposed to your company as a key offering. You need to create a perception in the middle of your target population that you can be trusted. You need to position yourself as knowledgeable then they will buy you first. Why do, we, why do they buy first? One, you. Who do they buy first? Sorry. One, you. Two, the product and service. And three, the company. Hmm. That's awesome. If your pros prospects buy you and buy on trust, then why is product pushing so prevalent in the marketing? Whenever you, you compete strictly on product basis, you turn yourself into a commodity that is not the way to create market dominance. That's the way to suffer in the vast wasteland of low fees, shrinking profits, and dismal, ever-shrinking results. New Marketing Reality 9. How fast you close depends on how well you start. Authority. Dr. Robert C. Salandini's fantastic book Influence the psychology of persuasion clearly shows the power of authority for helping in the sales and marketing arena among other important keys such as social proof and likability was authority that ability to be seen by as someone people should listen to he described the power of this reporting about the scientific research work of Dr. John Miglin the famous Milgram studies concluded that if someone held in high enough position of authority he could get subjects to do just about anything. His semi-annual study, semi -annual, but that doesn't look, study involved gathering students in a waiting room where they could participate in the study on electricity. He would go in the waiting room dressed in his white medical smock, stethoscope and clipboard to pick subjects. He would take them into the lab two at a time. Once inside, he sat one student in a chair and hooked them to electrodes while the other student watched. Once done, the second student would go to the other room where all the electrodes gathered to the back of the electrical contraption. The second student was told that he was to measure the effects of the electricity of the human body. He was to ask a question of the zappy, and if the question wasn't answered correctly, he, the zapper, had to flip a switch on the electrical machine which would shoot a jolt of electricity through the wire into the zappy. Oh no, I'm having a problem with my screen, guys. Okay. Can someone pick up right there? Yeah, I can, I can pick up. Um, so you left out where yet still he was told to flip the switch, right? Yep, and all of a sudden my HP assistant came on my screen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anybody else want to pick up there? It got so bad that the screen. I, I will. Thank you, Lorraine. I think that's Lorraine. Okay. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. In addition, after every question asked, the zapper would double the watts being sent into the other student. After four or five wrong answers, there were screams from the other room. Yet, still, he was told to flip the switch. I got so bad that it got so bad that the screams could be heard down the hall. The zapper was admonished to continue regardless of the protests and if the zappy refused to answer, the zapper was to consider that a wrong answer and zap him anyway. By this time the screams were blood curdling. Still the doctor, white smock and all, told him to continue. As it turns out, the zappy wasn't actually hooked up to the machine, it just looked that way to the zapper. The purpose of the study was to see how far someone would continue to inflict pain on another because an authority figure had told them to do so. 
the results were shocking. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> that was bad. Because it was a doctor who was giving the orders, the student acquis uh, ac ac oh, my tongue acquisition acquisition even though he knew it might hurt or possibly kill the other person. Mm -hmm. He did what he was told. Oh. The, this whole exercise proved the power of authority in, in the persuasion game. As a salesperson or marketer of any kind, you would want to influ you would want to influence others. Well, Milgram would tell you to make sure that you create an aura of authority so you can move the sale in your direction. Even if you are new, even if you are not the best in your company, we suggest you include an authority orientation in your marketing because in our day, it moves your objectives forward. The power of this can be enormous. For example, if you can consummate the sale in two visits instead of four or five, if they see you as a knowledgeable person of authority, they will accept your proposals much more readily, decreasing the time from introduction to purchase. What if you could accomplish more sales in less time? Be great. Yes, you are credible enough to publish a book. New Marketing Reality 10. Publishing a book is the absolute best marketing and income acceleration tool in this new economy. If you look at the new marketing realities described in this book, you will see that if you want to succeed in sales or building any business or practice, you need to reinvent your marketing. In essence, we have said that your marketing must make the prospects come to you attraction separate you from all others selling what you sell differentiation get you in front of more of the right people visibility position you as a trusted advisor credibility shorten the buying cycle or get your proposal accepted authority buy you shelf life longevity then is there anything better than a book to do this since I've been sharing this message for almost two decades, I know how many of you feel, who am I to write a book? I'm not a writer. Great. Neither were the thousands of people I've taught this to and who have reaped the benefits of having a book as a marketing tool. This isn't about getting you to do a book, um, getting you to do book tours and book signings. It's about using a book to help you overcome the new marketing realities that you face every day. A book is a marketing brochure on steroids. I can almost hear the excuses. Who am I to write a book? I'm not credible. You don't have to, you don't have to be a PhD to write a book. Write the book. That's all the credibility you need. I don't have time to write the book. You don't have to spend a lot of time. We'll show you how to write a book in less than 40 hours or use our copyright free material from our library of chapters. Ooh. I'm not sure what to write about. Just write about your prospect's biggest problem and how you can solve it with your product or service or use our patent and pending process for writing the right content. I can't afford it. It does, it does cost money to publish a book and make it work for you. Find sponsors who also want to get in front of your target market, or let us show you how to find people you'll pay for the entire who will pay for the entire project. I'm a procrastinator. You can't keep going like this. Just consider how much you can multiply your business with the power of a book. You need a coach. That's what we do. Thank you very much, Lorraine. I appreciate that reading so far. Anyone else want to come out? Jody, do you want to come out and read? Sure, I just had to unmute myself. Thank you. It's not really about a book. It's all about marketing. Make the prospects come to you attraction. Nothing will draw your prospects to you or fill your pipeline faster and with more power than a book. When you offer a free book, people will come out of the woodwork to get it. Rosietta Shari, one of our authors, went from 20 calls a week 
through her $1,500 ad to over 500 calls from the same size ad when she offered a free book in that ad. The perceived value of a book is high, even though the relative cost is small. Not only will it attract prospects to you, it positions you correctly in front of those people. Instead of you chasing prospects in the way you are doing now, make them come to you. Separate yourself from all others selling what you sell. Differentiation. We have shown that in our current business climate, you need to find a way to differentiate yourself from everyone else who sells what you sell. You have to change the current perception that you are just like all the others who do what you do. If you send a free book to your prospect or show up at a sales call with your published book, you will instantly make your competition totally irrelevant. A book has that power. How many financial advisors do you know who are authors? How many times have you gone into an optician's office and he autographed his book for you? Do you know many authors? Well, get this, neither do your prospects. That's a powerful way to say to the market, I'm different. Get yourself in front of more of the right people. Visibility. Are you aware that every magazine, or sorry, every newspaper, magazine, radio show, television program, and journal starts every day as blank? That is, they need to fill all that space, time, and shows with stories, articles, interviews, and content. Where do you think all that comes from? In a large part, it comes from authors. In our society, those who have written books are perceived to be experts, and there is a huge demand for them to share their expertise. If you want to keep your name in front of your target market, then you should publish a book. If you want to significantly multiply your business, you need to get your message in front of more people. If you are an author, you need to get first dibs at the opportunities out there, and there are plenty. Keep going. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I can pick up from here. <laughs> okay. I was enjoying your reading. <laughs> Position. Thank you, Jody and Lorraine and um, Scarlett. Appreciate you all reading so far. Um, position yourself as a trusted advisor of credibility. Since one of the main themes of this book is that the consumer has a disdain almost for marketers today, anything you can do to raise your credibility will almost certainly help attract prospects to you. You need to seriously consider a book because in our society, authors are viewed as credible. When someone's picture is on a book, you see them as someone you should listen to. Wow. Nothing gives you credibility faster than a book. Shorten the buying cycle or get your proposal accepted authority. Imagine what would happen to your business if you could get your prospect to buy faster. Imagine that you could close the same amount of business in a fraction of the time. What if you could have someone or something sell your prospects before they even met with you? You now have that ability as an author. Many of our authors send their books to their prospect before the appointment to speed up the sales cycles. If you weren't a dentist, you could have. If you were a dentist and you had 30% more case acceptance, what would that do to your bottom line? If you were a cosmetic surgeon who could have patients accept your treatment plan without any balking. Your answer is publish a book. And he has the notes section here. So it's really, really important that we all publish a book. And that is going to be the challenge for each one of us and those that are listening in. And that is to publish a book. Um, one of the things that before we go into, um, I think I may just go to that tomorrow, but let's go back and mastermind on. Um, what we've read so far, we've we've really covered some really good information. And one of the things that has stood out to me is, you know, publishing a book. I mean, it's it allows you to stand out from the crowd. You're different than any, everyone else, and, and that's what we have to work towards is being different than everyone else. And and you become the expert when you write the book. And I had my coach tell me this not too long ago. He says, Rachel, you know, a lot of people won't write a book because they're afraid that they don't have all the nuggets and all the details. And some of the things that he shared with me about writing a book, it just it, it, it made everything just come into alignment and, and understanding for me that I can actually write a book. Because most people think, you know, where am I going to get all that content from? 
there are so many great ideas. I'm not sure what, what Jerry does, but I'm looking forward to us coming together and masterminding on us writing a book. And I know we are talking about writing one together as a group, but I think we also need to write one as individuals so that we're able to position ourselves in front of people. And so when we have our workshops and our, and our events and our seminars, guess what we'll have over on our table? We'll have our books over there. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. Okay, so we're on reality number seven. Anyone else want to come out and share their um, takeaways or you know their thoughts and their ideas on what we read so far? Um, I think that, okay, so now if it's not so clear that we need to write a book, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think maybe that's the next book we should look at reading for our book club. I'm really excited and, and I'm really excited because we have Miss Jody, who's already written one with us, so I'm, you know, I'm sure she's got lots of really good tools and tricks for us. Mine that I had done was an ebook. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like this is like a you know real like bound book bound book kind of thing, which which I am not an expert in it, but I'm super excited to learn how because I've always wanted to do that. So thank you, this is awesome. Thank you very much, Scarlett, for sharing. And um, Jody, what's the name of your book? I want to. Is it on Amazon? Um, actually. I, I'm not quite. I'm not finished it yet. I said I was in the process of doing it. Oh, but that's I, right. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but I don't have, know it's ready yet. But okay. Well, let's let's. Yes. Let's and so, as, of course, as I'm reading this, it's like I'm writing down. Got to get it done. Got to get it done, um, because I'm sort of in the revision stages of it, and <laughs> just kind of fine, fine tooth combing, I guess you call it, mm -hmm. right now, and. Um, Everyone's ideas of when they start a book or they get an idea for a book, um, it changes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that is a process that, especially for people who are first starting, is that you might have an idea of what you start with, but how mm -hmm. it ends up could be totally different. And just to be aware of that process and just to allow, <laughs> because I don't know anyone who started with um, let's say a title in mind and that they didn't end up changing it several times as they're writing the book. Um, and that's just part of the creative process because what's inside of you and what you really really want to share is what ends up coming out. So for example when I first started my book um, I had I had left a job while the furniture store where I was working had closed down and I had worked with a very very negative person he was kind of a bully. So I had started writing my book because I needed to vent that, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought how to, first of all, my book was entitled, you know, how to overcome bullying in the workplace. <laughs> but as the book started progressing and what my notes kept being written out about and certain words kept popping out and I wrote them here on my dream board, um, things that I'm good at, which is business, serving, and leadership, speaking skills, creative, love, authentic. Um, those words, how I describe myself, is what kept popping out. And so the book started in one way, um, but has totally ended up being a whole different um, a different stance from where I first started. So instead of being a book about bullying, the name of my book is The Heartpreneur, which is, of course, authentic selling from your heart because that wasn't my real story being bullied. The real story was the fact that um, before I went to work, how I focused on only serving five people that day and that I wanted to be authentic to those people. So that's just kind of my short, I guess, short or long version of it. But as you start to create something, what you really want to share will just come out in the process. Awesome. Wow. Uh, we're looking forward to that book, Jody. Please keep us updated on when it's published and ready to be purchased because we're all going to go out and buy a copy and we're going to promote it, help you promote that book. So please keep us posted on, you know, where the process of it, okay? 
Oh, wow, that's so exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, anyone else want to share their um, what their takeaway for was on today's reading? I mean, it really, it was all about books. But any other nuggets that you know you want to share as far as you know how we how a person can become more visible? You know, the new marketing strategy. Um, yeah, I, I want to share on the new marketing, the Reality 8 that we read. Mm -hmm. about how slick is out and credibility mm -hmm. is in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, for the last couple of years, I, I was kind of, I guess, sucked in, if you want to say that, to people who were slick selling. Um, because I was so burnt out as a salesperson and, and having, like I said, my last job that I just left feeling really depressed from, I got caught up into that slick selling, you know? how you can, the people who make the big promises and then there's very little to the actual product. And you want to be credible to the people that you're selling to. And, you know, that slick selling that, you know, just get it now and, and stuff, I think that's really, really out. And people will sign up with you more now based on your credibility mm -hmm. than based on the slick slick selling. <laughs> awesome. I agree. Jody, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting too because I think back, you know, I'm thinking about like my current business that I'm in. I think we're all in. Um, you know, the people that are on my team are people that I know, people that have come to know, like, trust me. Um, and, and so that's, it's, it's so true. It's not about the slick words that you have to say. It's about um, people feeling like, you know, I can really trust that person that's selling to me um, and, and that they're going to tell me the truth and they're going to be honest with the entire um, uh, product or service that they are providing. So, true, true, true. I, I, I love that idea. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone? We're all quiet. Sharon, I know you weren't here, but... Good morning. Can you Good morning. hear me? Yeah. Yes. I oh, okay. You. I guess my mic was off. I was talking. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. First, giving honor to our Lord and Savior who allowed us all to be here on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Um, yesterday, I used the analogy that from Miracle on 34th Street, mm -hmm. and it, I think it's appropriate again today when Chris Kringles um, was at Macy's. And everybody came there and they were looking for certain things and he provided value to them. So when we are out there creating our businesses, we need to make sure that we are providing value as well. When Macy's didn't have the item that the uh, customer needed, Chris told them where to go. In the beginning, they were real upset because they said, wow, we're sending business somewhere else. But that's what, when you are a panel or group or a team that is striving towards the same thing, we all going to have different ideas and different ways of doing things. And our goal here is to help one another, to help us all grow and to be diverse in all of our areas so that, hey, Rachel might do fearless coaching, but Lorraine might be into health and wellness. So, you know, then we would promote Lorraine as well. If someone came to Rachel and said, well, I need this. To oh, Lorraine does that. Mm -hmm. Same thing that Macy's did. They said, "Okay, go down the store to so go down the road to so and so store. They have what you need." So you know, we need to be able to help other entrepreneurs to get to where they want to be. And some and a lot of people say, "Oh, I can't do that. I can't help anybody. That's taken away from me." No, the more people you help, the better your income will be, because if you are true to yourself and you help one another it's going to come back to you tenfold so you know we all need to be mindful and helpful and respectful of other entrepreneurs and promote them um, so that their business can grow and in turn your business will grow 
Absolutely, Sharon. You know, it, 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 what you're just saying just reminds me of one of the, you know, when I first started, when I first, you know, knew that I needed to get over my fear, I was speaking to people to, um, I, I don't like calling it recruiting, so I would say like prospecting, you know, building relationships with, with people. One of the scripts that really, really stood out to me was two people. One was Danny Johnson, and another one was, I don't know, who originally came out with this one, but I know um, Jessica Higdon used it quite a bit. And it was like, how can I help you? How can I promote your business? You know, what can I do to help you get to where you're going? And, you know, and that was one of the questions. And what it does is it actually takes the, um, no one wants to be sold to. And I think you all mentioned that yesterday in the training. No, no one wants to be sold to. And once you, begin to take an interest in what the other person is doing, you're actually beginning to build this, a trust and a bond between you and that other person. So it's really, really important that we, you know, um, promote one another, promote what, what each other is doing. You know, Sharon has something, you know, uh, as she said on her wall, go share it. You know, if Jody has something, share it. Share it. Let's help you the word. I, my husband is writing a book right now. Um, he hasn't really given, given it a name yet. But he's really, really good with writing up like little poetry things. So I just said that you know every day that he that he writes it on his wall, I'm going to start sharing it. You know that's how I help him. You know we all, you know, I mean I, you have your following, I have mine. Everyone has someone that, that's following them, and what you have, maybe you or, or what you have access to, you may not be able to be the actual expert in it, but you know someone else that is. And it can very well help those that are following you. So it's really, really important that we come together um, in the building of each other up. So thank you very much, Sharon. I appreciate that. Um, anyone else? I actually have a, a story on that. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, uh, I can't even remember how long, but it was quite a while ago that I used to work in a jewelry store. And it, a couple had come in and they were looking for specific small earrings for their daughter for graduation and we didn't have what they were looking for but earlier in the day um, the same mall has like four other jewelry stores so I happened to be looking through one of the other jewelry stores and I knew that that jewelry store had exactly what they were looking for so I said to them hey go down on the other floor there I think the jewelry store down there has what you're looking for and I got in a lot of trouble <laughs> for saying that because it just happened to be that week that we actually had some of the owners in there and my manager and stuff and they heard what I said and I didn't know it um, but they were about they were gonna fire me for that for referring a customer outside the store and not making the sale but about two or three days later um, the fella came back in just himself and he had said you know what I appreciated how honest you were that what we were looking for was in another store and it's coming up to our 25th wedding anniversary and I want you uh, and only you to have um, to put together a ten thousand dollar ring for me for my wife and I was like oh okay so I had found him find the right Canadian diamond and all that for his special something something for his wife and you know I mean besides that that saved me my job because you know that's sort of what a lot of people do in a whole month and I did in one sale mm -hmm. was the fact that I went with my heart on being honest with someone and it really does come back to you. Um, that's all I can say. If you don't have what someone is really, really looking for, but you do suggest where else they go, they're mm -hmm. going to remember your authenticity. And mm -hmm. they will come back to you when they know that you're an expert in something and that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and even, Jody, another thing that I think about is even when we're like, you know, all of us on this panel, you know, if. I know like Lorraine does um, oils, right? Um, I did sign up in her, but I don't really do anything with it. But, <laughs> you know, if, you know, instead of going to the store and buying oils from the store, why not buy them from Lorraine, you know? Um, or, you know, whatever, you know, if, if like, like with your book or whatever product you have, 
or if you have a business that you know that really resonates like if, if one of you are in a business that's you know maybe it's another multiple stream of income that doesn't require you know putting your attention on there that's really how people actually build businesses in this industry is because um, people come to know like and trust them so they'll buy from them when they do put something out there so it, again, I mean that's so powerful. Your character and people coming to trust you and like you for um, just just for who you are. So, cool. Thank you very much, um, Jody. I appreciate that. Uh, let me see. We're over in. Let's go to where it says reality number nine. How fast you close depends on how well you start. I think that's really important. When he was talking about um, when you have a book. It actually gives you an opportunity to sell even before the selling process takes place. Um, and you think about it, you know, if, if, you, if you're going to meet with a client and you send them a book beforehand, you know, you're already considered as an expert in the industry even before you get there because not everyone has taken the time to sit down and write a book. So that was my big takeaway, the power of a book. I just, I really realized how powerful this subject is writing this book. So this is something that we definitely, definitely, definitely need to put on our goal um, for the month of April. And so Jody will have uh, some steps ahead of us, but that's okay. Because Jody, we want you to take a part in the chapter that we're going to be writing a book that for um, our group. So we want you to take a, a part in that chapter if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Anyone else? Anyone else want to? I, I, hey, who wants to expound on the, the story about the... Uh, Lorraine, I thought you got a good laugh out of this. You want to come out and talk about um, your takeaway on the guy that got zapped? <laughs> well, you know, that that's when going with your heart is so important. Mm -hmm. Because usually what you feel in your gut, and I'm not going to say it's every time, but most times what you feel in your gut is the truth. And, and just because there's a figure of authority doesn't mean that that authority is correct. Mm -hmm. And I, I took a personal, um, I'm going to say offense, or not offense, but, uh, you know, chuckle maybe, that the person was actually, you know, they, they put a doctor figure, you know, as the figure of authority. Well, and y you all know my, <laughs> my take on that, um, you know, as far as saying well, all these people are going out and getting a flu vaccine. All right, well, what are you really putting in your body? You know, are you putting in all this mercury and this poison? Poison. And, yes, in your body. Well, because, you know, well, you, the drugstores and doctors say that this is what you need to do. In the meantime, it's killing senior citizens. It's doing, and the same thing with vaccines in children. I, when we were little, I mean, I got my vaccines, my children got theirs, but there Look were... Look at the rise in autistic like children small, and all kinds of different things. ...a fraction of what these children are getting nowadays, and it's scary. I mean, the, the cases of autism and ADD and ADHD that have exploded... And, of course, there's the food and the GMOs, and, I mean, it's a huge thing. But the authority figures tell us that's what we need to do. And that's the scary part, because the authority figure may not always be right. So. Exactly, yeah. Well, Lorraine, you're right. And, you know, I think about, you know, I mean, and look at, look at the replication of that or the or the result of following, just because they are an authority figure doesn't always mean that they are right. Um, and when I think about what you're talking about as far as vaccinations, things of that nature, if now we have ADHD issues, you know, autism, things of that nature, if they wanted to, if there was a chance or a small possibility, or a possibility, not going to say a small, of your child going out to being an entrepreneur, being someone successful, now, because they have taken shots and things of that nature, it limits their ability to be able to do that because now they have all these other functional things that are going on. And this is another story because, you know, my son has special needs, so I'm dealing with a lot of stuff right now. And one of the questions that was asked, and I think that we don't think about this as parents. I didn't know about anybody else. But 
what do you want your child to do when they grow up? That is so powerful. I mean, you know, like most people, let me, let me back up me. I was like, how can I want my child to do anything? My child has to make their own decisions as to what I, what they want to do. But I think that when we start them out on the right path of what maybe what you want, but realizing that as they get older, they're going to have their own ideas. They're going to have their own vision that they want. But at least put that seed in them so that they can desire something. Because if you don't put a desire in them, they'll desire nothing. So that was just kind of like a, um, it was just a big aha for me. That, you know, like how many parents, you know, really, really say, I want my child to be this. And I used to thought it was kind of um, ludicrous at the time. I'm like, how can they force that on their child? Their child is going to make their own decisions. But now it makes so much more sense that um, picking back up what you're saying about we really can't, they, our children can't function at their fullest potential and be the entrepreneurs that they were created to, do, to be if we're listening to all the authority figures and say, pump all this in them. You know, we, we really, knowledge is power. Go get the knowledge first that you need in order to make a educated decision on what you should be doing. So definitely awesome, awesome stuff. So this new marketing strategy stuff is really awesome because it's not about necessarily pushing your product down someone's throat, but it's more about relationship. Anyone else have anything else they want to share today? Well, I think what you just said about, you know, wanting <clears throat> your child um, to be a certain thing. Right, that is the difference between respecting authority and and your son um, w wanting to be successful because he knows better, and the difference between being forced to obeying authority mm -hmm. without the respect and the integ integrity. Um, and I think that's a huge difference in authority figures. Don't you think? Respect and integrity Absolutely. Um, is huge. Huge. Absolutely. And you just pick the way, the best way to be an authority figure, Rachel. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We, we learn as we go. That's, that's the important part is learning as we go and having a mentor along the way to kind of help you. And, and, and this book, books are a wonderful mentor. If you don't have a mentor, start getting reading books. Books can be a very powerful mentor until you find the one that's right for you. Anyone else have? Thank you very much, Lorraine. I appreciate you sharing that. Anyone else have anything else they want to share on this particular subject? Um, um, I I have six kids. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we we have a blended family. We have two his, two mine, and two together. Mm -hmm. And um, with the four older kids, they're they're all basically now grown up and and uh, and gone to their their prospective ways. And with all of them, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur in my heart probably since I was seven years old. Um, my parents years ago were probably one of the first Amway people to sign up in Canada and stuff. And I actually remember doing the Amway seven circle stuff to my Barbies. <laughs> so for me, that that uh, salesmanship and, and working for myself has always been really, really high. And for our four older kids, um, my son who's 19, I remember once him and I were traveling he was about 13 at the time and we had my two younger ones were in their car seats in the back seat and had fallen asleep and for some reason um, my radio wasn't working and neither was my DVD player. So we actually had a talk. <laughs> you know, here we are driving on away and we had to talk and he was t asking me all sorts of stuff. and. And I started telling him about some business stuff and how when you're young, you should do some investments. And, and by far the biggest thing in your life when you're choosing something to do, it should be something that you love. And on the way back, um, my dad had fixed, had fixed the car, whatever was wrong with it. But on the way back, it was funny because I said, okay, kids are asleep. What, what kind of CD do you want to listen to? And he goes, I don't want to listen to a CD, Mom. I want more life lessons from you. That was good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, how we do influence our kids is 
the highest calling for a lot of us as moms. Mm -hmm. um, I want my children to do what they love and and I want them to be successful at it. Mm -hmm. And learning, um, like our youngest daughter, um, she loves, she's 12, she'll be 13 this Friday, and she loves to bake. And she can make pie, like from the crust up, like mm -hmm. no other person I've ever seen. So she has mm -hmm. that gift, and she really wants to own her own restaurant. However, she's not very good on the math skills. <laughs> and so, you know, we've been telling her, like, follow your dream. You are going to be a great cook and have your own restaurant. We can see that. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, you know, you do need to go to school to learn some of the basic business skills. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how are you going to be successful at it? So, you know, encourage your kids in what they love to do, but also make sure that they have the knowledge to do it. Absolutely, Jody. I agree with that. Because, you know, wow, you know, I'm, I'm doing some research on outsourcing because that's, that's the direction that we as a world we're moving in, is into outsourcing. And I thought about when you were talking about your daughter not doing math, I'm like, outsource. <laughs> Accountant. Like, yeah, exactly. Basic skills, you know, in order to do that. So um, <laughs> everything, if you ask me, everything should be outsourced. All I should have to do is make a phone call or say, send a text and say, hey, can you do this for me? <laughs> But um, great information, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing about your daughter. This is so inspiring to see moms that are passing on to the next generation um, the same entrepreneurial skills. And, and you'll be prepared. I mean, like, she'll be prepared to um, move a lot faster than you. I mean, I have a friend who her daughter has writ written a book when she was 12. And the book was about, she has, I don't know, she has two or three siblings that have autism. So at 12 years old, she's already an expert. So writing a book is really, really powerful. You know, in, in, in writing that book, this is these are the things that really came out to me. Writing that book is not about the book. It's all about marketing. So if you really, really want to stand out amongst the crowd, write a book so that you can market yourself in, in, in a different way that, that you are you know you don't want to be like 98 percent of the population 98 percent of the entrepreneurs out there you don't want to be like that you want to position yourself as someone different and keep in mind when you write a book um, most people think they come up with excuses like I'm not credible you don't have to be a PhD to write a book just write the book you don't have to, um, time to write the book is another excuse that people come up with and keep in mind that you don't have to spend a lot of time writing a book. You know, you can actually write a book like in 40 hours, you know. And, you know, some of the tips that we'll talk about coming up in the days ahead, we'll talk about writing a book. Um, and then if you don't, not sure what to write about, I love what Joe Jody said, write about what you're passionate about, the thing that drives you or an experience that you've had and you could help someone else. You're, 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 pro you're providing a solution to someone's problem. Last one, I can't afford it. Now, when I first found this out, I thought this was very interesting. Most people write books, they give them away. Instead of charging for that book, give it away. Now you are even before more people and you have even more influence. That was powerful. And the last one is that if you're if, if you're a procrastinator, um, it says you can't keep going like this. Just find, just consider how much you can multiply your business with the power of the book. And you may need a coach or an accountability partner because a coach and an accountability partner will hold you accountable if you say you're going to write this book. They're going to be asking you, okay, how how did you do in the book today? You know, what did you do today to get you closer to that book? Um, what kind of problems did you run into? And the last one is, you know, they would ask you is. You know, how can I help you? How can I assist you in getting to that next step? But you're actually providing the answer and the solutions to your problems. Sometimes we'll have blocks. I have a lady at my church who I encourage her to write a book. She has a very powerful life story. And in her writing, she came to a point where she could not write it anymore because it brought about too many emotional scars. And that may happen too. But what you do is you just take some time, regroup, and then come back to it. Just don't forget about it. You know, most people, they start to write in a book and they, you know, just kind of quit. But realizing that you may run into a block and that's okay. 
but come back to it. You know, you may you may need to go through some counseling. You may need to go through some, you know, healing in order to go back to that portion of the book. And because a lot of times in life or in situations, we'll suppress things in the back of our mind. And it's not until you start writing that book that all of that hurt and that pain starts coming out. So I just want to really encourage you to write the book. And, you know, how many of you, those of you listening, how many of you have ever thought about writing a book? Um, and if so, what what was the topic about? What was the title? We want to hear from you. If you're on the feed, if you're listening, if you're listening on our feed, let us know. You know, what kind of book have you thought about writing, and what has stopped you from writing that book? And we can start with our panelists while we're waiting for everyone else. Um, I um, hey, this is Scarlett Roger. Hey, Scarlett, Joy Restoration Coach, <clears throat> and a, a little background. Um, with my story, and which is why I, 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 part of how I got into doing what I'm doing, is that um, my father, my father was born during the Great Depression, left at four years old, lived on a shrimp boat, and became one of the largest seafood producers in the United States of America. And um, they've got a statue of him in Key West, and and all of that great greatness. Uh, walked in on my fifteenth. Birth, for my 15th birthday, my sister's graduation, and um, he committed suicide, and I found him. Hmm. And it was a, tr it was tragic. I mean, his his service was, you know, we had the shrimp boat. There was just hundreds, probably about a thousand people that showed up, and and everybody over the years have said that he need, you know, somebody needed to write a book about this man. Hmm. And honestly. <sighs> And this is going to be on YouTube, and she won't remember. I think I waited to write. I, I I've always wanted to, you know, I uh, write a book about him. And I've had my mom had thought about it. I have a sister who now is on full slot dementia, who's my older, I love and respect greatly. And I kind of think it was waiting till because you could never ever talk that my dad was not perfect. And um, you know, there is good, set, bad, and the ugly. And sometimes that kind of stuff. So, so I am. That's part of my healing process is writing that book, uh, and also just writing a book about go. You know, because you know that is the ultimate, the ultimate alter, ar, entrepreneur. But um, just battling with that, the depressions of all that. So that's something that's really been on my heart, and is my goal to to do in 2014. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to um, I mean, reading that book. Uh, thank you. And Scarlett, um, thank you for sharing, you know, that, that was a deep part of you, you know, and most people have a difficult time sharing those deep parts, um, which you had to go through with your dad. So, and realize that in your writing, there may become some emotional points. Ex I think exactly, which is a healing process, I believe, mm -hmm. through that as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm just going to give a quick tip here. Um, I'm sure that we'll probably be discussing this more as the week goes on about uh, writing your book and how you do it and where you go and everything. But I'm actually a really bad writer. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'm more of a speaker and I always have been. So um, one of the reasons, you know, the finishing touches on my book isn't really well, well done is the fact that I write in point form um, because I've had my own radio show program for a number of years and, and other things and I love to speak you know that's where I'm at so this is just a tip that if writing and sitting down and um, I can't do it in front of a computer if I do write it's usually handwritten um, but for the most part I've actually um, spoken my book more than I've written it. And that's just a tip that if that's what's stopping someone from writing your book, just think that there's other ways that your voice can be heard. And you can get a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of people who pay, that you can pay to transcribe and really, really very inexpensive. And there's also a program that you can have on your computer called uh, Dragon Speak mm -hmm. that, you know, you can talk and you train it to your voice. That takes a little bit of time and that's probably frustrating for most people. But once you have that voice trained, um, you can just talk and 
your computer will be writing everything that you said. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get your book out there without if writing scares you. Those are some great, great tips, Jody. Thank you very much for sharing. I think that um, when I was uh, first contemplating writing a book, um, again, it, there's so many emotional things that go with writing a book too, especially if you're going to write about life stories and things that you've gone through. One of the um, suggestions was given to me was using um, a program called Audacity. That's another one that I was that was suggested to me, where you can actually write it or speak it and then have someone else transcribe and go over to a place like Fiverr and have Fiverr do the transcription for you or there's some other um, we're going to talk about outsourcing soon too so there are many places that you can go and make this happen it doesn't have to cost you a lot or require a lot of your time which most people think so great information Jody who else who else has a book that is in their heart or they thought about writing and they just didn't do it anybody listening in want to share the name of the book or what, what's on their heart about writing as well as those that are on our panel. It's kind of funny. I, I've i never really thought about writing. Well, I, you know, yeah, I should write a book about this, that, and the other thing, but never ever really seriously. But I have been telling my daughter or suggesting um, to my daughter for at least 15 years now that she should write a book. Mm -hmm. um, I, well, both my, my kids, um, they're older now and she's 25 and my son's 27, but they have been through so much in their lives with their friends and their relationships and how many friends that they've lost. I mean, my daughter was hit by a car um, when she was six years old. Um, you know, they've had lost friends from suicide and shootings and drug overdoses and car accidents and, I mean, they've had a really, really rough time in their lives and I keep telling her you should, and I've always told her, write a journal, write a journal. And I've even bought her blank journals so she could go on and, um, you know, just sketch it that that would be ideal for her to be able to sit and talk. Um, you know, now that she has a child of her own. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that would be, maybe that's what's been stopping her, and I think that would be ideal. I definitely want to get those programs um, and forward those to her, because it's time. It's time she writes this book. Um, awesome. Thank you very much. Um, no, I'll write the forward. So because you know, a, a lot of our young people don't think that you know, writing that like like what they have to say is important, or you know, anyone will listen to them. But they have a story. I mean, I think about my son who's 19 now, and you know, for a long time he wouldn't go out and get a job, and now even now he you know he is tired of being in the house. I'm like, yeah, mom, I love making money with you on the internet, but he's 19 years old. He needs to be out with people. I mean, we all do, you know, but we have been out with people for so long. It's okay that we hang out and make money at home. But with him, he's designing that social. And I said, son, I said, you should write a book about stuttering, about, you know, the challenges that you've had to go through and some of the things that you've done in order to get you over that. So really, you know, let's even encourage our young people to write a book about their, about their life. Because what we'll do is we'll position them at an early age to have financial freedom, you know, years, you know, ahead of their time where their friends are maybe getting it at 40 and 50, you know, like we are. They're getting it at 19, 20, 30 years old. They're beginning to reap the, you reap the um, benefits of that. So definitely I, I'm really proud of um, Lorraine, you know, identifying that, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing what your daughter has to say when you bring this to her attention. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyone else? Now, me personally, I never ever thought about writing a book. Writing a book never came to my mind. Now, I write policies and procedures to me that's not a book that's just telling people how to do things and to make sure that it's done and everyone 
is following the same rules and guidelines, but I never thought about that being a book. Mm -hmm. But I guess in a way it was because I wrote several um, for the company I used to work for. Mm -hmm. So us writing this book, that's, that's going to be a challenge for me because I don't know where to begin, but I know that we will work it out and we will come up with the guidelines and everything for for the book. So I look forward to that. But me personally sitting down writing a book, no. I do many hobbies, but writing a book was not one on the list. So this this will definitely be new for me. Well, Sharon, I know that you're gonna provide a lot of good content for the book. And as I sit here across the looking across the panel, what I see is um, in the part of our book, you know, because it's about being an entrepreneur. I see Scarlett talking about restoration, how you know individuals have been hurt in the industry, um, and how they can recoup from that. Sharon, I see you like I see you teaching on, um, you know, like the trainer on you know steps to get started, you know, because one of the things that you always say to us is, you know, I wish that this information had been like a blueprint had been here uh, before when I first got started, because it could have saved me a lot of time. So I see that in you when you're writing your book. I see Lorraine. Lorraine um, is uh, writing about how to be healthy. You know, we can't, you can't enjoy money in life if you're sick. So I see, I see Lorraine, you know, contributing in that area as entrepreneurs. Just because we're entrepreneurs don't mean, don't mean that we don't need to know about health and nutrition and how to take care of ourselves, you know. And then Jody, I don't, Jody just is like, she just comes in here. She's already up and running, so she's probably going to direct the whole book <laughs> because she's already created the path. So I'm really looking forward to, and she'll have to let us know where she wants to uh, plug in. And then definitely, and, and Deborah just steps in on the stage. Like, leave, leave it to Deborah. She's going to get in here and let us know that she still loves us. Um, <laughs> Deborah, why you made up, up and looking so serious? Where that smile at, girl? I need a smile. <laughs> I'm just listening. <laughs> but um, how much? Did, how long y'all been going? Oh, we've been going since twelve o'clock. <laughs> but I mean, uh, after the hangout, I mean, after the book reading. Um, we I don't know because we we kind of read and then we started masterminding and we read again. Um, but yeah, definitely let's not leave Deborah out of this. And so Deborah is going to be our wealth creation coach. She's going to she's the 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 mastermind behind wealth. And, and how you can build it, um, and, and a lot of times we think it's just the internet. There are so many ways to invest your money and to get a return on it. So I'm looking forward to. Don't know all the details of it, but I know it's going to be really exciting and awesome once we actually sat down and mastermind on um, the book. <clears throat> um, Deborah, uh, you kind of what we've talked about so far basically is you know the way to posi position yourself ahead of the game, ahead of the market, is to write a book. And your book is really not about the book, but it's more about marketing. And that was a key thing that we talked about, along with um, along with uh, positioning yourself and not marketing, but building relationships and trust with people. So that's pretty much what we talked about today. Did you have anything you wanted to add to it before we close this Hangout out? No, I'm fine. I I read. I re did read it. I had to leave the hangout. I was here earlier. Okay. Because well, I had an important phone call come through. Okay. Awesome. Well, if you, you sure you don't have anything you want to say, because this doesn't seem like a hangout without Deborah's input. No, I'm I'm cool. To that. <laughs> you know, we we like the icing on the cake. You got to give us some icing now. <laughs> Where's the icing at, Deborah? Come on. <laughs> I got I got so much on my mind. I'm gonna live today, ride. Okay, you're going to let today write? Okay, we, we, we yeah. understand. So we but I do get the concept of the book. The book is going to position yourself as uh, someone that can solve problems for other people. Exactly, exactly. And we know that um, each one of us has, you know, we have gifts and talents that can help each other with that. Okay, if there's nothing else, just want to say thank you to everyone that came out and um, took the time out to hang out with us and mastermind. Hopefully these nuggets and these tips have helped you to propel forward and come up with new marketing strategies to help you in your endeavors to become an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. If you found this information um, 
helpful, we're going to ask that you subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share. Um, and last but not least, if you're looking for um, to become an entrepreneur online, uh, get back with the person who invited you here, get back with them, and they will be able to mentor you, help you, and encourage you and empower you to become the entrepreneur that you decide or you desire to be. Uh, without further ado, we just want to say thank you for coming out, and we will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great day. God bless you for now.